Welcome to MAT2LB, booklet number eight, fractions, lesson number seven, adding, subtracting, and reducing fractions. So here we are at the end of our first unit on fractions. Lesson number seven, we're bringing it all together. We're going to be adding and subtracting. We're not going to give you a lot of guidance right out of the gate as to whether or not the denominators are the same, whether we change one or two, or how to reduce them. We're going to be doing all of those things in every question. So let's start with example number one. Add or subtract the following fractions, four over five minus one over three. All right, first question. Are our denominators the same? We have 4 over 5 minus 1 over 3. No, denominators are not the same. So now we're going to see if we can skip count from 3 to 5. And that would be skip counting by 3. So let's try. That would be 3, 6. Nope, skip counting is not going to work since 6 is already past 5. So what do we do if we can't skip count from the smaller denominator into the larger denominator? We are going to multiply each fraction by the other denominator. So let's do that rewrite right now. 4 over 5 minus 1 over 3. So this denominator over here, we are going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by that. And our second denominator, which is right here, we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator of the second fraction by that. So there we go. Let's rewrite again. We have 3 times 4, which is 12, and 3 times 15, or 3 times 5, rather, which is 15, minus 1 times 5, which is 5, over 3 times 5, which is 15. Okay, so we're doing good here. We have the same denominator. Now we are going to keep our denominator, and we are going to do the subtraction that we can over here in our numerator. So we have 12 minus 5, that's going to give us 7. Now this last step that we're going to be adding is checking in our factor chart to see if we can reduce 7 fifteenths to a lower form. So now let's go and we'll find 7 and 15 in our factor chart. So there's 7 and there's 15. And let's see what factors they have in common. So there's a 1, that'll be common to both. And that's it. There's only one common to both. So for our purposes, this is the lowest this fraction can be expressed. So 7 fifteenths is already the lowest form of that fraction. So our final answer will be 7 over 15. And the reason, of course, is that if we were to divide 7 by 1, we would get 7 again. And if we were to divide 15 by 1, we'd get 15 again. So we don't actually have to go through the mathematics of doing that division if we're dividing by 1. So there's example number 1. Let's look at example number 2. Add or subtract the following fractions. So here we have 1 quarter plus 3 sixths. Again, our denominators, are they the same? They are not. We have 4 and we have 6. So we're going to see next, if we can only change one of them, we're going to skip count from the smaller one to the larger one to see if we can make it. So we're skip counting by 4. And let's try that. 4, 8. Nope, not going to work because that is a sixth. And when we get to 8, we're already past 6. So what are we going to do? We are going to multiply each fraction by the other denominator. So I'm going to start by rewriting 1 quarter plus 3 sixth. And now I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator over here by 6 times 6. And we are going to multiply the second fraction by the first denominator, which is 4. And I'm writing that now. Next step, we are going to do the math. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 times 4 is 12, over 6 times 4, which is 24. So this is looking good. Our denominators are the same. Let's add our numerators together while keeping the denominator. So we have 24 as our denominator, and 6 and 12 is going to give us 18. So we have 18 over 24. The last step is to see if 18 over 24 can be reduced to a lower equivalent fraction. So let's head to our factor chart and see. 18 over 24. So there's 18 and there's 24. So let's zoom in here and see what factors we have in common. So we have 1 for sure. We have 2, that's good. Also got 3, 4 we don't, 6 we do, 9 we don't, and 18 we don't. So that's it. Our greatest common factor is going to be 6, and we're going to write that down. So the greatest common factor equals 6, and that means that we are going to take our 18 
over 24, and we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by that greatest common factor of 6. And now we do the math. 18 divided by 6 gives us 3, and 24 divided by 6 gives us 4. So our answer is going to be 3 over 4. And that is in the lowest um, equivalent fraction form. So let's go try example A here on your own. I'd like you to hit pause here, give it a try, and when you got it, come on back and we'll see how you did. All right, you're back. Let's look at this one. 6 over 4 minus 4 over 4. First question, are our denominators the same? In this case, they are. We have 6 over 4 minus 4 over 4. If the denominators are the same, we are going to keep the denominator and do whatever operation we have to with the numerators. In this case, subtraction. 6 minus 4 gives us 2 over 4. Now we're going to see if 2 over 4 is in its lowest equivalent fraction form. So we go over to the factor chart. Let's erase this other stuff. We've got 2 and 4, so let's go find those They're right up here near the top. There's 2, there's 4. What factors do they have in common? They have 1 in common, and they have 2 in common. That's actually all the factors that there are with 2. So 2 is going to be our greatest common factor. So let's write that down. Greatest common factor equals 2. And now we are going to rewrite our fraction. And then we're going to divide numerator and denominator by the greatest common fraction, which is 2. And that will give us 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. And 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. So 1 over 2 is the lowest form of 2 over 4, which is our answer to 4 six, or 6 fourths minus 4 fourths. All right, last one, example B. Give this one a try on your own. When you think you've got it worked out in lowest form, come on back, we'll see how you did. Okay, let's have a look. We have 2 over 8 plus 1 over 2. Are our denominators the same? They are not. So first things first, we're going to try skip counting from the lowest, the lowest denominator to the larger denominator. Let's skip counting by 2. Let's see if it makes it. Let's start here. 2, 4, 6, 8. We did make it to 8. That's awesome. So what that means is we have to have to count up how many skip counts it took us to get there. That's 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. So let's write that down. The skip count is going to be 4. What that tells us is that we are going to multiply the smaller, the fraction with the smaller denominator by our skip counted number, which I'm writing out now. And now we're going to do the math in our next step. So we have 2 over 8 plus 4 over 8. This is looking good. Our denominators are the same now. So let's add our numerators together while keeping our denominator. 2 plus 4 gives us 6. This is looking good. Last step is to check if we can reduce this to a lower equivalent form. So we are looking for 6 and 8. Let's go find 6 and 8. We'll erase the rest of that stuff. So there's 6. There's 8. Let's see what the greatest common factor among them or between them is. So one's common. 2 is also common. And that's it. So our greatest common factor in this case is going to be 2. And I'm going to write that down. Greatest common factor equals 2. Now we are going to take our answer, divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, and do the math. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3, 8 divided by 2 gives us 4, and that is our answer to 2 eighths plus 1 half. It equals 3 quarters. So this is the end of lesson 7. It's the end of this first unit on fractions, so you're going into the review right after this worksheet. This lesson in particular is a really nice summing up of all that we've done in this unit. So good luck with the worksheet, good luck on the review, and good luck on the test.